Romeo described, because you come to a council meeting and you ask about your trash and you're demeaned. And the people who, you, who they're serving, people have forgotten. How many mayors and council people decided to run because they were mistreated by their own elected officials? Right? Isn't that true? Right. Now, one of the mantras that we had for our children, and it's the first, I won't bore you with all of them, and I won't bore you, honey, with that. <laughs> was there, the first one was, and the most important, is there's no one and nothing more important than your family. And if you think about that, that extends up throughout life. I'm not, when, when you think about family, isn't that the very heart of all the world's great religions? Doesn't to be uh, a good Hebrew, a good Muslim, a good Christian, don't we talk about family values? And aren't those the things that bind all those religions together? Isn't that true? Yes. 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 me it starts with family and I, I, I you know I'm the first college graduate of, of, of my family's generation I'm the oldest uh, of many grandchildren and I want to I'll go back in that in a moment but I want to really thank uh, my parents because if it wasn't for my parents John and Mary and my sisters that I grew up with they instilled me with values they instilled me with working class values they instilled me with the value of working hard and playing by the rules is the only way to live your life. And I want you to all remember that. Yes. Now my mother was one of 10 from a large Italian immigrant family, living in the fifth floor of a walk up of the north end of Boston before it was fashionable. <laughs> now, the kitchen sink was the dishwasher. The kitchen sink was the shower. The kitchen sink was where everyone gathered to have a conversation while my mother washed the dishes and my father directed her. <laughs> now when they came to this country, my, my grandparents came with the hope of a better life, like a lot of our families here, like a lot of the new immigrants that come to America today. They came here seeking opportunity, the ability to prove themselves, the ability to make a better life for their families. And I'm proud to represent my mother and father's family by standing here today as the first college graduate and the first person to seek high office in our family. And I couldn't be here without those values that they gave us. Now, I want to tell you about that Italian family. I don't know where they are right now, but my cousins drove all the way from Boston to be here. There they are right over there. <laughs> Now, I have to tell you, one of my cousins is, is very near to me. He's my godson. And uh, we've exchanged a great relationship through the course of his life. We've endured the loss of his dad, my uncle. And he's a great man, and, he, and he's one of the leaders of our family up in Boston. And Greg, my godson, one of the best bass players in the music business, is sitting right over there. <laughs> now, as we expand our family, I want to thank I want, I tell you, um, 1989, my life changed. I sat next to this woman on an airplane who looked like she needed some sleep. She was wearing black t-shirt, black pants, black shoes, and black eyes for being a resident, a third year resident. In those days, they used to work 36 hour shifts, take eight hours off, and go back and do another 36 hours. I offered her some sugar, and she accepted. <laughs> That was a groundbreaking moment in my life because I met someone for the first time who wanted to be a partner. Someone who demonstrated to me what true, the true value of family is. And, and she's, a middle, she's from Ohio, and she represents the, the sensibilities of, as you would imagine, from a Midwesterner. And she taught me how to be kind, and she taught me how to be gentle. Because, let's face it, an Italian from the North End wasn't too gentle and kind. <laughs> <laughs> now, because we met my wife, we were, we've been blessed to have two gorgeous children. My oldest today is uh, preparing for her own show tonight at Georgetown University, where she's attending. She, she'll be staying on at Georgetown next year. She's a senior. She's going to be uh, getting, following her mom's footsteps and be going to Georgetown Medical School. And I just want to throw Jessica, my daughter, a shout out. Can you all just shout out Jessica? One, two, three. Yeah. Jessica! 
Now, my youngest daughter, who witnessed the trials and tribulations of an oldest daughter in a dad's relationship, <laughs> and having the ingenious genes of her mother and friends, decided that she would take a different track with dad. Let's make dad a little bit more comfortable. And Allison, I want to thank you for being part of my life and showing me that everything that we do for people is, is imbued in you and how you started your collegiate career at Fordham University. I, yeah, give a so, I yeah, so I stand before you running for Congress. Um, we're in a very limited law practice and a wife who's a physician and two children in college and one going to medical school. So if anyone wants to donate to the McKeon College Fund, <laughs> please feel free to see my wife afterwards. <laughs> now, some of you have gotten to know Sharon. Through the years, it's been very difficult because as a high-risk obstetrician, she works many hours, constantly being on call, unable to attend the various political functions and social events that she wanted to do because she was out there working to save uh, on behalf of women's health care to save women who literally, as the mayor so eloquently put, save people, save women and babies for, to make it to term. Women with lupus, women with cancer, women with AIDS. That's who my wife is. But I want to tell you, aside from the professionalism that she, dis she displays and the kindness and the gentle persona that she is, she is one of the most, in fact, she is the best mother I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Now, when we talk about family, we're not just talking about the nuclear family, we're talking about the broader family. We're talking, we can talk about the community family. And the community family is why we are, we are all here today. The community family is the local religious leaders of our churches and synagogues and mosques. The local community leaders are the volunteers who coach every Saturday morning. Some of you have given up a soccer game to be here this morning. Some of you have given up basketball. Community is also about the volunteer elected officials, which goes unnoticed. Now, the family is also inclusive of friendships that you've established over, over your long haul in your life. And I've been blessed to have friends of mine come who've actually grown up with me uh, through the years. And I want to throw a shout out to all my pals back there who've grown up with me, all my baseball buddies, all my basketball buddies who have endured, in fact, one of them said to me, I hope you give a speech better than you throw a pass. <laughs> I didn't know I was that bad passer. <laughs> but the local leaders in the mayors and council, who many, many are here today to support our effort to take CD5 back. This is not John McCann. And anyone who's been on our campaign, who's been on the campaign for the last few weeks knows that my view of CD5 is not that one man is there to, do, to run the show. This is a team effort. And the broader community and family is going to join that team. We are here to support our communities. <laughs> I want to thank all my dear friends here. Mayor, what you talked about, I hope everyone heard what she talked about. I hope everyone listened to what she had to say about our politics and about people who wish to seek to divide us. I will not do that. I will not divide us by social economic class. I will not divide us by race. And I certainly will not divide us by, the by people who seek to divide us. Does that make any sense? I used to teach so you have to fall apart <laughs> Mayor, listening to you speak this morning about veterans, and here we are in the VFW Hall where I spent many of my young formative years in the VFW Hall, Beachmont, Massachusetts, following my dad. I learned in 1971 that you could actually buy a bottle of Budweiser for 40 cents. <laughs> right in the VFW Hall. <laughs> I, I want to thank you for acknowledging um, the importance of, of veterans. In fact, as I was listening to you, I can't get the images of my dad out of my head. He's, he's 81 years old. He's currently receiving care from the VA three times a week. They're coming to visit him. And there's no doubt that they do a great job. But it, what I also know is we are in drastic need of a recommitment, a reboot, to support the veterans of this country and improve the services of this country. I, I, I want to thank 
Um, some of my old friends in Dumont that have come out tonight, uh, Mayor uh, Winant, who started the, the, I believe you're the one to start, the Mayor's Night on Monday nights in Dumont, is that correct? Correct. I learned a lot about how to serve uh, when I was a uh, junior councilman. Uh, ben Romeo was brand new to politics, as you articulated today, and we ran a, an insurgent's candidacy to get rid of real corruption against people in our own party. And I will do that. I can promise you this. No matter what the party is, I will always put the constituents first. Whether you're Republican, Democrat, left wing, right wing, chicken wing, I don't care who you are. I really want to thank Ben Romeo. If you heard him speak this morning, um, it was a tone. And I thank him for that. You know why I thank him for that? Because as, 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 as a mayor from Norwood, um, um, from uh, Burgerfield said, you know, I know that you're doing a good job because you got Ben Romeo to come out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I want to thank you, Mayor, for your uh, insightful approach to politics in Burgerfield. It is not easy, and it's not going to be easy for you this year, but I want you to know this. The, the citizens of Burgerfield are lucky to have you. As some of the people in the other party practice politics with jobs and cronyism, I know that you're going to stand up against it, and I'll be right there with you to help you. Mayor of, of, excuse me, the sheriff of Sussex County drove all the way here to be here today. I want everyone to, to, to give a big round of applause. <laughs> one of the things the mayor didn't tell you, oh, excuse me, the sheriff didn't. <laughs> I gotta stop drinking in the morning. <laughs> but the sheriff didn't tell you in his, he's in his third term. And he's, a, as he pointed out, he's a vet. But this, he practices the very values of taking care of the money of the constituents. He is, by definition, very concerned to watch the money. In all of his years of, of being the sheriff, he has held his budget well below the rate of inflation for every single year he's been in office. Wow. And the citizens of Sussex are lucky to have Friends, relatives, friends, I want you to meet the future of our party right here, standing right before you. As leaders of our party and people who support family values, it is incumbent upon anyone over the age of 35 <laughs> to recruit young people and encourage them to run, to run for office and not be afraid of them and welcome, and welcome to, the, to the Republican clubs because when you do that, this is your result right here. He's 26 years old, can you believe that? <laughs> now, he also ran in Paramus for the running mate and he felt really just short. I want to acknowledge Muhammad Redder right over there. of our party engage in outreach to a community that needs to be heard by the Republican Party. And I want to thank him and Muhammad for dedicating themselves to the citizens of Paramus. And I have a feeling Paramus is going to hear from you again next year. Thank you. Now, I only have one request of this young 26-year-old. I noticed you were standing on this side of the stage next to my daughter. I would prefer it. <laughs> now you know why I believe in the Second Amendment. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> Can't help myself. Now, um, you know, I was going through my notes and preparing today's speech. It, most of you know I taught economics and political science at Pace. And one of the things that struck me about last year's campaign in this district, Jersey values and 
no sign them telling the voters what party you were identifying with. I, I